know, frost is inevitable, probably sooner rather than later. And while many of us are dialing down our efforts in the landscape, a gardener in Afton is rolling up her sleeves, nurturing the last standing soldiers in the flower garden. And of course, that's where we find Rebecca Coles this week. Those with modest urban backyards may wish to exercise caution because that's exactly what prompted addictive like behavior for Jan and John of Afton, Minnesota. They traded in their postage stamp backyard in St. Louis Park for this five blooming acres in Afton, Minnesota, now the home of Jan's artisan garden. And we do a lot of zinnias. You know, we have little short ones that are adorable for jars and little arrangements. What are the best cut flowers to grow? Ooh, um, zinnias can be a great cut flower if you know when to cut them. So you don't want to cut your zinnias when they are still a floppy stem. That will not last. It will droop right over in your vase. Isn't it just magical to just see what nature can produce? Oh. Every time they flower, I'm like, how is this a thing? How can this I happen, know, right? I know, it's magic. So many petals and they're so symmetrical. I mean, they are something that I look forward to all summer. In Minnesota, you, there's so much work. You have to grow them all summer. They finally start blooming mid-August, and then we just have them until that frost. So obviously great bouquet flowers. Obviously, yeah, they're stunning. Everybody loves dahlias in their bouquets. Um, they are a ton of work, you're right, and so you just have to really enjoy them while they're around, and we try to just enjoy them in every way possible. And the obsession with all these seductive blooms started early for Janet, nine years old. It started with one peony plant. I feel like this farm has given me the freedom to really create anything I feel like I can create and keep under control, right? Um, and that's an am amazing feeling for me just because it's something I've always wanted since I was little. I just wanted a huge garden to play in. That's, and I still say that. I say, I'm going to go play in the garden and this is it. And just like any relationship, any business, there's always hurdles along the way that you never anticipated. Right now, it's all flowers. But when we came out here, there were weeds taller than me. And so, like, I didn't think weeds could even get that tall. But weeds can get taller than you. And so we've, you know, worked to try to make sure we keep everything under control and get it uh, back to a better, healthier place. Oh, God, those are lovely. Yeah, so our oh. other specialty is snapdragons, but this, you know, those are usually peaking like end of June, early July. Okay, so this is the kind of bouquet that members receive once a week on their doorstep. Beautiful. What kind of tips can you tell people to keep their flowers fresh as long as possible? Always use a clean vase. Okay, clean that vase out just like you would all your other kitchenware. Um, Keep your vase clean, use clean water, change that water probably every three days. And if the bottoms of those stems start to look mushy or brown, trim that bad part off and then put them in clean water. I think one major thing is, is actually to see her flourish, uh, which gives me um, a lot. It, it fuels me because to, to see her happy and doing that um, makes me happy. But then in turn, um, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's exploration. I'm a tinkerer. I love to like have my hands in a lot of different projects and this is a space to, to explore those things. Rebecca Coles, WCCO 4 News. Those are pretty. Those are really those, pretty. Those flowers, I can see why those flowers make her happy. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for a flower subscription or order fall flowers from Jan, we'll connect you at WCCO.com slash links. And Rebecca shares some of those photos on her Instagram, as along with some fun DIY ideas and recipes. Right now, just about.